Hello, welcome to Charles County Now. I'm Natasha Anthony. Have you ever wondered if you need a permit for that new home project or what the rules are for hosting a big neighborhood event? Or maybe you've seen a business pop up in a residential area and wondered if that's allowed. Well, here to answer these questions and more are Jarrington Baysmore, the Zoning Inspections Supervisor. And joining us later is Mark Potter. He's the Associate County Attorney and he will discuss code enforcement. So let's just welcome Jarrington. Welcome, Jarrington. How are you doing, Natasha? I am doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining us here on Charles County Now. We are so honored to have you. I appreciate you. Thank you. So as a code, code enforcement officer, Jarrington, you see everything from minor infractions to serious violations. Where do you see the more serious violations and what do people need to know? See the most serious violations in the residential zones, okay. some in the commercial zones as well. But as far as the residential zones, the constituents or property owners feel that they can just operate um, businesses, um, any type of business from their home uh, without going through the permit process. Um, we try to ensure that they know okay. that they need to follow the process of the county code by obtaining permits or at least getting some um, answers or reaching out to us so that we can follow up with them and let them know what's allowed and what's not allowed. Some of the businesses that we've seen on the regular have been uh, home daycares just because uh, the business or the owner of the business have received their licenses through the state. Mm -hmm. They fail to realize that they need to receive permission or a use and occupancy certificate or home occupation permit from the county. Interesting, interesting, very interesting. Thank you so much, Jarrington. So many residents might not realize there are rules about running a business from home, like you've just said about the daycares. Can you explain what kind of businesses are allowed in residential zones and what steps residents need to take to ensure that they are in compliance? There's an example of a business that's allowed to be ran from a home would be like a daycare or a hair salon slash barbershop. Um, types of businesses that are not allowed are like an auto repair shop, selling vehicles from your your property, multiple vehicles from your property, okay. running like a car dealership, mm -hmm. um, and um, or dental or medical facilities. Um, we have what we call the table, uses corresponding with the table of permissible uses, which indicates or illustrates exactly what's permitted, what's not permitted, okay. what's permitted with conditions, and what is um, these special exceptions to be ran from a residential zone. Um, and if you are interested in knowing these things, reach out to the Department of Planning and Growth Management and speak with a subject matter expert who will lead you, guide you, and direct you on the path forward how to obtain said permits, approvals, and or review. Thank you so much, Jarrington. So when it comes to construction, um, can you say why is it important to obtain permits or contact planning and zoning, even if it's just a small renovation? Yes, it's made for the safety and the well-being of individuals that's going to be living in that dwelling. Okay. Additionally, um, any, con any additions or um, new rooms that were added or walls that were taken down need to be recorded in the Maryland Treasury assessment and tr taxation as well for when new owners or p potential buyers are looking to find out, I want a three bedroom home and a mm -hmm. two bathroom, but mm -hmm. it's listed as a two bedroom and a one bedroom. Definitely. So uh, permits are very important for the future and for the current uh, residential residents living in that dwelling. Mainly again for safety. For safety, okay. So special events are particularly unique with respect to permits and can have a significant impact to a community. Yeah. So Jarrington, can you tell us what would require a permit and about the process for obtaining a special event permit and you know why these permits are necessary? I know that they're like there's a three part question. Yes. Well permits are very important because you need to know exactly what you can and cannot do in mm -hmm. a residential and or commercial zone. Um, there has been several different events that have occurred over the course of the years that required a review and approval. And to get that, you would again need to contact the Department of Planning and Growth Management. And one of the subject matter experts would be more than happy to guide you and lead you in the right way before you 
schedule or have an, uh, an event that is prohibited. And then mm, comes okay, forth yeah. the code enforcement. Thank you so much for that, Jarrington. Now, code enforcement is not just about enforcement. So how does the county work with residents to ensure everyone understands and complies with local regulations? First and foremost, we present the information through the media, social media as well. Um, when it comes down to the actual steps, code enforcement, we, give, we provide the alleged person in violation notification, mm -hmm. uh, which we call an initial violation okay. notice, mm -hmm. where we list everything that we have observed on that complaint investigation. And we inform them that they have 15 days from the date of the letter to come into compliance, make contact with the inspector, find out exactly what they need to do in order to come in to abate said violations. At the same token, all the fees, fines, and penalties are held in abeyance at that time. When it comes down to the compliance inspection, usually 20 days after the initial complaint investigation, if we go back out and find that the violations have not been abated and we have not received any communication from said constituent or mm -hmm. property owner, then an official notification letter comes out. And then that's when we assess all the civil penalty fees, inspection fees, and we notify them that this code case is going down to the county attorney's office for legal enforcement actions. Okay, okay, well, thank you. Um, Jarrington, it was such an honor and a pleasure talking with you. Um, thank you so much for this invaluable insight. And now if viewers want more information or they have questions, um, where can they go? please go to www.charlescountymd.gov and you can look up um, a, what you call a CSS portal or a citizen self-service portal. Okay. Create an account and you can follow those steps and those links to find out exactly what you can or cannot do. Um, and it will be filtered to the correct uh, parties okay. who will review and approve or deny or and get back to you about exactly what it is you're trying to do one way or the other. Okay. And you can also come in person, meet us here at 200 Baltimore Street, La Plata, Maryland, 20646. Thank you so much, Jarrington. Again, thank you. Jarrington Bazemore, he's a zoning inspection supervisor. We'll be right back with Mark Porter from the county attorney's office to discuss some of the legal implications of zoning and code enforcement. I am proud to work for Charles County government because I know the work that I do positively impacts the community that I live in. I'm proud to work for Charles County government. I enjoy helping people and I love working with my fellow employees. I am proud to work for Charles County government because I love serving the community I live in and this is a place that gives me the opportunity and training to be the best that I can be. This is Charles County Now and welcome back. Joining us now is Mark Porter. He's the Associate County Attorney to discuss the legal side of zoning, land use, and how these regulations keep our community safe and organized. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me. It is such a joy to have you. It's our pleasure as well. Can you give us an overview of how land use is determined and what factors are considered when zoning land for residential, commercial, or industrial use? Sure. So there are many things that the state delegates to local jurisdictions and land use is one of them. Okay. So the idea is that local jurisdictions know their land, their communities the best, what those communities want, what those communities need, and land use is how those local jurisdictions implement those changes. So as far as factors that are considered, they want to consider what the community needs. Mm -hmm. Uh, they want to consider natural resources, okay. utilities, okay. water resources, so on and so forth. Um, there are many, many more factors that I could take up all of our time getting into <laughs> what goes into land use, but that's it in a nutshell. Definitely. Well, thank you so much, Mark. Now, we heard earlier from Jarrington about operating a business in a, an area zoned residential. Now, from a legal standpoint, 
why are these restrictions on operating businesses in residential zones and what are the broader implications for the community if these regulations are not followed? Sure. So the way that the local jurisdiction adopts land use regulations, you have what's called a comprehensive plan. Okay. So part of that plan is um, making sure that certain uses are in certain areas. You have mm -hmm. commercial uses in commercial districts, and then you have residential uses in residential districts, mm -hmm. industrial, so on and so forth. Um, you don't want commercial uses within residential zones because they may bring certain, it may alter the character of the residential area okay. in a way that the local jurisdiction doesn't want to have. If you have a business, they often um, require more parking, more people going in and out, and you don't necessarily want that in a residential okay. area. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. So it, it's just one of those things that um, the adoption and the implementation of the comprehensive plan is the way that um, the local jurisdiction moves forward with zoning regulations. Okay, okay, Mark. Thank you so much. That was um, well said. A lot of the zoning regulations and policy stem from health, safety, and wellness. How do zoning regulations contribute to the health and safety of the community and what legal um, standpoints are in place to enforce these policies? Sure. So from a health, safety, and welfare uh, perspective, certain uses come with certain uh, aspects that might not be desirable in, let's say, a residential area. Mm -hmm. One thing that we encounter quite often are unpermitted junkyards, which mm. may come with uh, a certain amount of you know, wrecked cars and fluids and chemicals being hazardous. Yeah, yeah. hazardous. Mm -hmm. And you don't want that within a residential zone. And consider the, consider the neighborhood, consider the people that are buying these properties and living there. They have a certain expectation that where they live safe. and where they raise their families mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. where they reside, um, they want it to be safe and they want to make sure that they are able to enjoy their properties, Definitely. which if you have a junkyard down the street, you can't necessarily enjoy your property in the way that you would expect to be able to. That's true. From an enforcement mechanism perspective, mm -hmm. Uh, the county would be able to pursue what's called an injunction, which would be a court order mandating or prohibiting somebody from doing something. So with the junkyard example, uh, I would pursue an injunction that says you can't operate a junkyard in this residential area. Court would say, we agree with you, Mr. Potter. Thank you for the fantastic argument. Mm -hmm. This injunction is granted. And then that junkyard would no longer be able to continue in that residential area. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Mark, for your argument indeed for getting rid of a junkyard from our community. Now, Mark, what role does the county attorney's um, office play in supporting the work of code enforcement offices and ensuring compliance with local regulations? Sure. So, uh, code enforcement, they seek to educate constituents on what they can and cannot do they conduct inspections at these properties mm -hmm. and they really try to work with constituents in saying hey that thing that you're doing you can't do it here this is the code that says that you're not allowed right. to do it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. some people are receptive to that some people are not receptive to that mm. and that's when the county attorney's office comes in to support code enforcement so while code enforcement may say you can't do this thing that you're doing uh, I would echo that message and I usually try to give people an opportunity to uh, correct the mistake. My first instinct is not to file suit despite what my title may be. Mm -hmm. uh, I really try to educate people on what they can and cannot do and why they can't do it and give them an opportunity once they have that information to correct the issue. Definitely. Now they don't always correct it and then lawsuits are filed and then they get told by a judge, you can't do the thing. Why didn't you listen to Mr. Potter? And then that, that's, that's where we're at. Uh, the county attorney's office also advises code enforcement as far as um, how to best serve the community, making sure that the information is correct mm -hmm. and uh, accurate because laws do change 
and I want to make sure that my people are uh, on top of things. Definitely. What advice would you give to residents to help them stay informed about zoning laws and avoid legal issues related to land use and building regulations? So the county has so many people that want to help and we are here to serve the community. We are here to serve the constituents with questions that they have. Mm -hmm. So I would say ask the county if there's, if there's something that you want to do, contact the county. You will be directed to where the, you'll be directed to the person right, that has the answer. Definitely. And then if they don't have the answer, we'll find a way to, to give you that information. Oh, well, thank but you. But ultimately, contact the county. You heard that. So please do try to reach out to the Charles County government with any questions you have, regardless. Um, so the um, Mark is here. Uh, Mark Potter, he's the Associate County Attorney. Mark, thank you so much for being with us and thank you for sharing the valuable information about zoning and about you know the great work that your office is doing in collaboration with enforcement. That's all we have for this episode. For Charles County Now, I am Natasha Anthony.